Well, I guess we can start with this, Coach. We've said this before to you. Say it again. Welcome home. I'm good to be back. Right? Thank you. Yeah, I know. Excited to be here. What a great opportunity. What a fantastic place. Um, it's been a fun day. A lot, a lot of stuff going on. Had a chance to see a lot of people and a lot of familiar faces. So really, really enjoyed uh, the whole thing today and just excited to hit the ground running. Why don't we change gears a little bit? You've talked about everything football. Really, Let's talk baseball. People may not know about your baseball career. It was pretty dang good, wasn't it? Uh, it was pretty short. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I went to Texas Tech, play, had a chance to go play for Larry Hayes when when Larry took over the baseball program there. He did some great things at Texas Tech. I wasn't a big piece of it. I was just kind of a guy that hung around. But Larry was great. Um, had a chance to work with some some phenomenal coaches. Tim Tadlock was a teammate of mine who's now the head coach and had a lot of success. So it's a lot of fun uh, to be around that program and to kind of get things going at Texas Tech. But as I said, I didn't have much of a career. I saw where uh, Kirk Sarlos and the baseball staff made a point of coming up to you afterwards. You still a baseball guy? Still like it? You know what's funny? I, I love baseball. I love the game. Yeah. Um, I don't really get a chance to keep up with it much. Uh, my son, I've got a five-year-old son, Daniel, and he loves baseball. He's always asking me about the players and you know, I'm, I'm wanting to talk to him about Nolan Ryan and guys like that. And he's talking about, you know, Mike Trout and these guys that I don't know who they are. <laughs> so anyway, it's uh, I, I, I try to keep up as much as I can. I enjoy going to games and looking forward to going to his games. Your, your coaching career actually started with baseball. Is that right? It in did. high school? Yeah. So uh, I got it's funny. I was certified to be a sophomore English teacher. Mm -hmm. And so I got a job at Monahan's High School in the spring. Uh, they had a, 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 a teacher that was going on maternity leave. So I got to go to Monahan's, coach baseball that spring. Then took a job in the Dallas area at Richardson Pierce, and that was my first full-time uh, football job. I'd been a volunteer coach a little bit at Friendship High School when I was, um, you know, getting my degree and my teacher certification. Uh, and so, but that was my first full-time job was here in DFW, and then a year later on to Navarro Junior College for a couple of years, uh, right down the road in Corsicana, and then Kentucky as a GA and. Everywhere since then. Yeah, Hal Mummy, Mike Leach, got a chance to be on both of those staffs, obviously. Mike Stoops at, uh, at Arizona. Well, I, I want to go back, though, because you grew up around football. Obviously, your dad, and we talked about that earlier, how, how proud your dad would be of today, and you said he'd be smiling. You were always around really good men, though, weren't you? I mean, you, you think back to Coach Dykes' staffs. Yeah, yeah, that, and, was, that was a blessing. Yeah. That was probably the greatest blessing that I ever had was just – Having a chance to be around my dad, you know, he was a really unique person, um, had a very interesting perspective on the world and people and learned so much from him. And then, you know, so many of his closest friends were on his staff for really th th his whole career. So just a chance to be around those guys, see the relationships that they had, the way they cared about each other, the way the families loved each other and cared about each other. Some of the, you know, those coaches' kids were our best friends growing up and have been friends, you know, our entire lives. And so, you know, I just got to see the value of being a football coach and, and you know, go through all the things that you have to go through, the ups and downs and the moves and everything. But it's it's a great way to make a living. And it's a, it's a very interesting way to make a living for sure. Well, from an X's and O's perspective, would would you say Coach Leach, Coach Mummy, Coach Dykes, who, who had the biggest influence on you? Yeah, I think, I think you know, philosophy on the world, probably my dad, uh, you know, probably as much as anything else. You know, my dad was a defensive guy. I was always kind of more of an offensive guy. Um, you know, and then going to Kentucky where I was Mike's GA uh, in 1997 and got to be really part of the installation of the air raid in the SEC at that time. And it was something that really college football hadn't seen. Uh, certainly the SEC hadn't seen it. And, you know, Hal and Mike had had great success at Iowa Wesleyan and Valdosta State and different places. But we got to do it in the SEC. It was awesome to be a part of that. Uh, did that for a year as Leach's GA, then went to Louisiana Monroe for a year, was on a full-time coaching gig there, ended up going back to Kentucky a year later. Mike went to Oklahoma. I got, I got to take his spot. And then 2000, my dad retired. Uh, 99 season, my dad retired at Texas Tech, and then Mike Leach got the job, and I went with him. So it was, uh, it was kind of a strange time. You know, my dad and brother were on the staff at Texas Tech, and I was coming in when my dad retired. And But what, a, what an awesome time. And it was fun because we got to be part of changing college football, really. We had that great staff at Texas Tech where, you know, Art Browse was the running back coach and Dana Holgerson coached the inside receivers and I coached the outside receivers and Ruffin McNeil was on the staff and on to be a head coach and Bill Biedenboe was one of the best offensive line coaches in the country, was a GA. And then Lincoln Riley was a student coach, Dave Aranda was a GA. Um, then you had Cliff Kingsbury, Sonny Cumbie, Graham Harrell, all those guys were quarterbacks for us at that time. and so. Really fun place to be. Uh, just a, you know, the one thing that Mike was great about doing was we all felt like we contributed something. You know, he was great about giving people responsibility and, and letting them grow as coaches. And 
you know, Mike was going to do what Mike was going to do, but we didn't know that. <laughs> you know, we believed that we could, we, we could help change his mind. And it was a, just a great experience and, and around guys that really knew football. You, you, you talked about your, your, the way your sort of life decisions have been formed by your dad. I heard a story, and if I'm out of line, stop me. I heard a story that when he, he retired and uh, the secretary was cleaning out his desk and she found a bunch of checks that were made out to your dad from where he had loaned folks money over the years and he had never cashed the check when they paid him back. Yeah. Is that, that true? Uh, you know, that doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I think, uh, you know. That tells you something. It does. Yeah, you know, look, my dad, as I said, was a pretty unique guy. He just had a different perspective on the world. Um, you know, the thing I probably appreciated the most was just the way he treated people. You know, everybody was important to him. You know, everybody had value. Didn't matter if you were the biggest booster or or the, the, the person that cleaned up at the end of the day. You know, he treated everybody the same. And it was really fun to see that because that's not the case everywhere. And, um, and, and to have an opportunity to learn from him and just see, you know, how people cared about him as a result of that. Um, it was pretty special. Family rem remains um, important to you, right? And, it, and, and we hear about coaches who kind of get lost in the in the game and in the preparation and all that H how do you find a way to sort of separate yourself to say you know what I still got to be intentional with my family yeah look I mean the most important job I'm ever going to have in my life is to be a parent yeah. you know to be a dad uh, without a doubt and so you know my dad at that time in that generation it was all football all the time and you know when he got a little bit older I think he had some regrets for probably not spending as much time especially with my older sister you know, she had a lot of things kind of growing up that he couldn't go to, and he didn't get to see me play a lot of sports when I was growing up. He just was working all the time, and it was a different way of thinking at that point. Um, so there was certainly some regret there. One of the things he told me, you know, just said, make sure you, you do everything you can to, to be involved in your kids' lives and watch them grow. And so I try to do, you know, go to great lengths to be around my kids, to go support my, my, my two daughters and my son when they're – in dance or cheerleading right. or, or t-ball or soccer or whatever the case may be you know I'm gonna try to be there as much as possible and you know I look I think you have to have balance in your life I really do and and as I said earlier I mean there's nothing more important than I'm ever gonna do in my life than be a, a good father is that a re I'm not gonna say requirement is that one of the things though that you sort of encourage your staff to of do course as well? it is, yeah that's one thing I tell guys all the time like don't miss anything yeah you know go if your daughter's in a play go if it's you know, and there's times obviously it doesn't work. You know, we have a demanding schedule and there's a lot of things that that happen sometimes and things that you have to be at. But if you can figure out a way to do it, go and, and, and be a part of their life and don't have any regrets. You're, uh, you, uh, it, it seems like your MO when it comes to players is that uh, you want them to grow. You want them to experience things, not only football-wise, but now with the, uh, the uh, name, image, and likeness. You got, you got that you got to deal with. But you, you want them to have that. But there's also a level of accountability that comes with that. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, look, relationships are built on trust. Yeah. And, and trust takes time to earn. It's something that you earn by, by being truthful with somebody, telling them, telling them the truth all the time, even when it's hard to do that. Um, and so, you know, as we get to know the players here, you know, we hope those bonds start to, to take, take shape. And when they do, what happens at that point then is they know, look, this guy doesn't just care about me as a football player. He cares about me as a person. He cares about my family. He wants me to have a great life outside of football. And when, when the players believe that about you, they'll do anything in the world for you. And, and, you know, and they'll become unselfish and they'll do all the things that a lot of people say young people can't do. You know, I get told all the time, well, kids are in it for themselves. You know, they can't, you know, they can't do this. They're not going to sacrifice for the team. I don't find that to be the case at all. I, I think, uh, again, a part of that's just creating a culture where everybody knows that they want to sacrifice for each other because there's love for each other, there's respect for each other. They're all pouring into each other all the time, and, and that's our job. It's like I told our players yesterday. Look, this isn't, this isn't my team, it's your team. And the quicker they realize that and they take hold of that and they continue to pour into it and buy into that, then the quicker all those issues that surround your program start to disappear. What's the, um, what's the ultimate compliment you as a coach can receive from, from another coach, an outsider who's looking at your program and describing it? What, 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 what yeah, I, mean, I think the two things, you know, number one, you get the most out of your kids possible. And the second thing, which are probably the most important is, you know, your guys play hard all the time. Yeah. You know, I think that's at the end of the day, that's what our job is, is to get our players to play as hard as they can, no matter what the circumstance. You know, if they're up by 40, if they're down by 40, whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, if they're playing hard, then you have a chance to win every single football game. 
Uh, you, I really do believe that. And, and if you'll continue to grind and work, even through adversity, even when it gets tough to do, even when you're beat up, even when you're worn out, all those things, if you'll keep paying in, then the payoff will come. And I think that's what our guys have got to start to develop that mindset where they just say, look, we're not going to pay attention to the scoreboard. Our job is to go out, play for each other, play as hard as we can for 60 minutes, and then we'll see what, hap we'll see what happens. I asked you this earlier. I'm going to ask you again now for this. What, what would your mom and dad say today? Well, I'd be proud. I mean, I think that, you know, the thing about me is, you know, I'm always a big believer in second chances, um, you know, and I think that it's, it's, that's the best story is when somebody gets a second chance and they make the most of it. And, you know, and, and I was fortunate as a coach, we had a lot of success, you know, at Texas Tech. And then I went to become a coordinator at Arizona and we were fortunate to have success there and went to Louisiana Tech as a head coach and we had some success. And then I went to Cal and it was a mess. It didn't work out the way I wanted it to. And, and that was a great lesson. I learned so much from that. Then came back here for a year and had a chance to work with Coach Patterson, which was one of the great things that I've ever had a chance to do, just to see how he ran the program and, you know, just admired his passion for the game. It's just unrivaled. Nobody had that kind of passion like Gary does. Um, and then, you know, had a chance to go to SMU and kind of get that going again. But, you know, I, I'm a product of a second chance. And, you know, I think it's so much fun to see kids like in the transfer portal that, that come to your place, maybe that lost their job or whatever the case may be, that come in and, and get their second chance and thrive at that. And so that's one of the great things about being a football coach is you get to see those kids make their dreams come true and, you know, fight through adversity and just keep their head up and keep working. Second change starts today, huh? Fired up about it. Yeah, right. ready to go. All right. Best All right. of luck. All right, thank you, man. Appreciate Good you. to see you, man. Okay, thanks Looking so much. Looking forward to working with you. Right. That's Sonny Dykes joining us here right now on GoFrogs.com.